am. My name is Alessandra Haraguchi, and I graduated from HU last May with a degree in Missions and International Development Studies with a TESOL certification. Uh, I'm currently working on getting my MBA through Huntington, and I'm on the coaching staff for the HU women's soccer team. Uh, when I was at HU, I was a CMC, or SOJO, uh, for two years with Livingston Second, and I was a part of the soccer team for all four years. One of the best Disney movies came out during my junior year of college, and that was Frozen 2. And okay, I did personally think that uh, Frozen 1 was better than Frozen 2, only because it's the OG, but I'll leave that up for debate. However, uh, regardless of your thoughts on Frozen 2, or even if you've never seen it before, Kristoff, who is one of the main characters in Frozen, says, I think, one of the most profound things in the entire movie. And you don't even see it coming. Like, I, I know when I first saw it, it caught me off guard. And I was like, dang, Kristoff, that, that was deep. And so it's towards the end of the movie where Anna and Kristoff are walking out together from the Enchanted Forest. And for most of the movie, Anna basically ditches Kristoff, uh, but for good reasons, because she's trying to protect her sister. Well, then Anna apologizes uh, for her actions towards Kristoff, and then Kristoff responds with this statement saying, like, I know, I know, it's okay. And then he grabs her closer and says, my love is not fragile. Like, gosh dang, Kristoff, that's so good. And I think the reason why that's so good is because so often our love is fragile. Um, we, we tend to build walls when someone mistreats us. We cancel people when they wrong us or say something offensive. We are, we're often quick to let go of people if they don't make us feel comfortable. And we don't even want to try putting ourselves out there again because we're afraid of getting hurt. Our love shouldn't be fragile because God's love isn't fragile. And I know for the month of February, the theme for these messages have been talking about the power of relationships and what makes a relationship so powerful and freeing to be in is when we are able to fully love someone regardless about how they treat us or how they um, feel about us. And I want to paint a picture for you uh, what this looks like based in Matthew 26. So imagine, imagine this with me for a second. Somebody has just told you that you have 24 hours to live. What would you do? Or who would you be around with? And I guarantee you that most of us would probably be surrounded by some of the closest people we have in our lives. And this is what happens uh, to Jesus in Matthew 26, because he knew the time when he was going to die. And right before he gets arrested and walks the painful road to death, he spends time with his 12 disciples sharing a meal together. Um, and this is in, so Matthew 26, starting in verse 17 says, On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover meal? Uh, he replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. And Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl will betray me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. And then this is where Judas, the one, the one who would betray him, says, Surely, you don't mean me, Rabbi. And Jesus answered, you have said so. And I think it's crazy to me that from this passage that Judas still was invited to the table. 
And in another place in scripture, uh, John 13, it says that Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and this included Judas' feet, even though uh, Judas was the one who was going to betray him and initiate the arrest of Jesus. So if Jesus knew everything and knew he was going to die, then why in the world did Judas still get invited to participate in such intimate settings with Jesus? And I think it's because it's because God's love isn't fragile. Jesus didn't exclude or ignore or separate himself from Judas. Jesus fully loved him because he gave himself all of him, even though he knew he was going to get hurt. Our love shouldn't be fragile because God's love isn't fragile. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So why is it that our love is fragile then? And I think it's because there came a point in our lives when a really important person completely shattered our heart and or our hearts. And we weren't willing to pick up the pieces because those pieces were sharp and it hurts to pick them up. It was less painful if we didn't remember them. But when we don't deal with this, it hinders us from truly loving people like Jesus did. And it leads us to having a fragile kind or a fragile kind of love. Um, but God is a God who redeems broken hearts and he can heal any brokenness in your life if you let him. We were not meant to put the pieces back together on our own. And when we deal with this pain in our lives and invite the Lord to help us, then we can love like Jesus did. And our love shouldn't be fragile because God's love isn't fragile. And instead of a fragile kind of love, what if our love for others became as strong as iron? I believe God wants our love to become a steadfast kind of love, a strong, faithful, and unwavering kind of love. Because there will be a day when another person hurts us again, but our response should be one that doesn't depend on how that person treated us. Rather, it's dependent upon the Lord's command to love others, and our steadfast hearts, shaped by the Holy Spirit, will give us the strength to do just that. And as Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And so I just wanna leave you guys uh, with two practical things you can do right after listening to this message. And I'm not saying that this is going to be easy by any means, but I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit would work through this message to bring wholeness to someone out there listening. My first encouragement is that if you felt at all if there was a person who came to mind at any point during this message where you feel like you have showed a fragile love toward them, then I encourage you to take that before the Lord and ask him to forgive you and then to ask him what he wants you to do about it. And then the second thing is that I want you guys to ask the Lord if there is an area in your life that needs healing in order to receive um, a steadfast love. And I'm also a big advocate for talking with someone else about this in order to help us move forward towards healing. Uh, examples like going to counseling or talking with a trusted friend or older adult uh, are good options. And, <coughs> excuse me, uh, let me just end uh, with this. It is absolutely so healing to receive love from a steadfast heart. And our love shouldn't be fragile because God's love isn't fragile. Thanks guys for listening. Have a good rest of your day.